was 14, dating violence didn't mean anything to me. I knew what domestic violence was, um, I thought I knew, and that was that it was beating up your partner, um, and typically a man beating up a woman. And that was domestic violence and that wasn't good. But when I was 14, I didn't know anything about dating violence or that it involved anything else besides physical abuse. All I knew was I had a man, or a guy in high school who loved me and cared for me, connected with me in a way that no one else had, and he never hit me. I was with him for three years and he never hit me. In my mind, I wasn't in an abusive relationship. What he did do was put me down a lot. Um, as with, in with the compliments, um, they became replaced with insults, with you're stupid, no one's ever gonna love you, um, your body disproportion, you're not attractive, and also that I was his toy, I was his doll, um, and it was my job to please him. Those words and those things led into the sexual abuse that I experienced, namely rape. The first time he raped me, it was two months into us seeing each other. I thought of rape as the stranger who comes to get you, um, so I didn't think of it as rape at the time. It wasn't vaginal rape, it was anal rape. I didn't know that that was even a sexual act at the time since I was 14. And after it happened, I said, um, you know, did you hear me say no? And he said yes. And I said, well, if I say no, don't you have to stop? And he didn't answer me. And that was the first time. Throughout the three years of us being together, um, he would rape me the traditional way that people think, um, vaginally, um, multiple times. And orally. And I tried to get away from him. But um, he would call me, kind of stalk me with my cell phone, and leave me you know, messages of him just screaming or just breathing on the other end. I left school. I did homeschooling for a couple years um, so I wouldn't have to be around him and around boys in general because I was really nervous. But I did find a way back to him because in my mind, he was the only person who was ever going to love me. It was him or it was nothing. And I felt like I deserved everything he did. And if I was a good girlfriend, then he wouldn't have to rape me. I'd just be ready to go whenever he wanted. I went to the police once. Um, the one time that I called it rape is the time I told my mother and went to the police. I saw a female officer. She told me, um, so you've had sex with him before, but this time is the time that he forced you? And I said, yeah, and she really didn't believe me. Um, I wouldn't give his name, because um, I promised him that I wouldn't. She said that if he did this to someone else, that would be my fault. During one of our breakups, I, he was seeing someone else um, who was a virgin, he told me, and he said that he never raped this girl, um, so if he did do what I'm saying he did, then maybe it's me. Um, because he didn't do it to this other girl. I didn't want her to lose her virginity the way I had. I wrote her a letter saying what he had did. Um, it had been during a time when he was seeing her, so at least she would break up with him for cheating, if nothing else, if she didn't completely believe me. She circulated that letter across campus, and I was voted most sluttiest by my class on a website. And suffice to say, no one believed me, and I left school after that. I finally left him when I was 17 years old, and finally I just told myself that well, you know, I can be good. miserable by myself, and he, I'm sure he's right that I'll be alone for the rest of my life, and that'll be it, but at least I won't have to be raped and be, and have these nightmares and be scared all the time and be jumpy and nervous, and you know, at least I'll have some peace you know, if I'm away from him. And we didn't talk for years. About seven years after uh, we dated, he found me on Facebook and on MySpace and on a high school reunion website, all these places I had changed my name. Um, so he found me under the new name, sent me a bunch of messages, and I ignored them for a long time. And so I re replied to a message, and he said that he's been wanting to tell me something for years. So I called him from a, a blocked number with him saying um, how much he loves me, and there's been no one else like me. He was married then with a child, um, but there isn't a day that goes by that he doesn't think about me, and if I ever need any money, if I ever need anything, he's there for me. And I just cried and cried on the other line of the phone, silently, not saying a word, just listening to him talk. And I was trying to be a, a the better person and forgive and move on, and maybe he's changed and he has a child now. And after a couple messages, I wrote him, um, this is who you were to me. 
I said, you know, we've never really discussed the words, but you raped me, you abused me for years. I was scared that you would, when I was working out of state, that you would come and find me. And I've had nightmares for years and reliving of, of all these times and, you know, people not believing me and calling me a slut and me thinking that of myself. And that's who you were for me and I don't want any contact with you. And that's the last that you've spoken. Now that I'm 26, to me, dating violence is such a huge problem in that you don't know, you don't always know what it is when you see it or when you experience it. And I know I didn't. Um, all I knew about dating violence or abusive relationship was hitting. And since my boyfriend at the time never hit me, then it was normal. And anything that was happening that maybe I didn't like was my own fault. Now that I'm older, I really see that dating violence happens to so many people. So many people talk to me about it since I'm so open about my own experience that it's people you never would think it could happen to. Dating violence definitely can turn into domestic violence where there's marriage and children and financial um, ties. It's a real community problem. We all need to come together and really fight to prevent it from happening. When it does happen, to prevent it from continuing. My experience hasn't made me stronger at all. Put it this way, I every time I have a birthday, I'm surprised that I'm alive and that I made it this far. I was hospitalized when I was 15, um, 15 or 16 for being suicidal. I have scars still to this day on my wrist from cutting myself. Never thought I would make it to 21 years old. Ever since I was since I met him, I thought for sure um, I would have killed myself before then. I've had people in my life who have saved my life um, at different points in my life, and have have helped me and have you know kept me going. Without them, um, I don't think I would be alive. I don't think that dating violence is something that you overcome, forget. It can break you. If I had to go through it again, um, I definitely wouldn't, even though now my life is really dedicated to dating violence research and, you know, doing things, speaking out and trying to help people who have been victimized. I still wake up in the middle of the night at times, I still can't sleep, I've had insomnia up until a few years ago, where nights were just torturous for me. I think we should all fight so that no one has to go through this. that you're important. You know, you are a valuable person, you're a good person. You don't deserve to have anyone hit you or put you down, sexually abuse you, or anything like that because you're better than that. And when it can sneak up on you and you, you open up your eyes and all of a sudden you're in this abusive relationship that you never think you would ever be in, you can still walk away. It's never too late to walk away and pick yourself up.